Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss and in this video, I'm going to show you how to install the Otel collector in your Kubernetes cluster using Helm. So the first question that I want to answer is why would you want to install the Otel collector in a Kates cluster and why would you want to install it using Helm? The reason you would want to use Helm to deploy the Otel collector is because the Splunk distribution of the OpenTelemetry uh, collector provides a Helm chart. And the Helm chart is highly customizable and it allows you to deploy the OpenTelemetry collector to your Kubernetes environment with essentially a single command. And when you deploy this Helm chart, not only will you be able to monitor the applications that you've deployed to your Kubernetes cluster, but also you'll be able to get uh, metrics and data about the cluster itself and the objects that are running in the cluster. And then you'll be able to monitor your Kubernetes environment and the applications deployed to it very easily in Splunk Observability Cloud. So this documentation page that we're viewing now provides most of the instructions on how to get set up with the OpenTelemetry uh, collector in Kubernetes using the Helm chart. So if I scroll down, you can see the supported Kubernetes distributions um, that this uh, Helm chart supports, which includes the major cloud providers like Amazon EKS and uh, GKE. Now, in order to install the Helm chart, you would need Helm 3 installed and you need administrator access to your Kubernetes cluster. And the only thing that you're absolutely required to specify when installing this Helm chart is the destination that um, the collector is going to be sending data to, which could be Splunk Enterprise, Splunk Cloud Platform, or Splunk Observability Cloud. So depending on which platform you push to, and you can push to uh, multiple platforms, um, you would need to specify the endpoint as well as the authentication method that you're using. So if you're pushing to Splunk Observability Cloud, you would need to specify the access token and the observability realm. For Splunk Enterprise or Splunk Cloud Platform, you would have to specify the endpoint for the collector and then an HEC token. Now, if I scroll down further, uh, this documentation provides the commands that you would use in order to uh, install the Helm chart into uh, your Kubernetes cluster. So first you would want to add the Helm repo for the Otel collector Helm chart. And then after adding the Helm repo, you can then run the Helm install command to install that Helm chart uh, into your Kubernetes cluster. And as you can see here, there's three separate install commands um, depending on where you're sending the data. So they have an install command here uh, specifically just for uh, Splunk Observability Cloud. And you can see here where they pass in the access token. And then this second uh, Helm install command is specifying the Splunk Platform endpoint as well as the Splunk Platform token. But like I said before, if you wanted to, you can push data to both and you can specify that in uh, the Helm install command. Now, one thing that I'm pretty sure is not mentioned on this particular page is that you can utilize uh, Splunk Observability Cloud's uh, integration wizard to set up this uh, integration with your Kubernetes cluster. So let's navigate to Splunk Observability Cloud and take a look at that integration. From the home page, I can navigate to data management. On this page, it shows a list of uh, integrations that I've already set up. And I have set up a Kubernetes integration for this particular uh, organization. So if I wanted to add a new Kubernetes integration, I would select Add Integration. And then in the search bar, I could just search for Kubernetes. And I'll select Kubernetes here. So this wizard will help construct those commands that I was showing on the documentation page. I'll click Next. So all I have to do here is fill out the details of the integration uh, providing things like the environment, my cluster name, um, what kind of provider I have. So like uh, if I were deploying on AWS, uh, EKS, and if I want logs to be pushed to Splunk Enterprise or Splunk Cloud, I can specify that here. And it will prompt me for the event collector endpoint as well as the authentication token. So here I'm just going to put some placeholder text uh, so that we can move to the next step.
And then you can enable auto discovery, which will dynamically generate uh, collector configuration, as well as auto instrumentation. So if you had a Java application running in your Kubernetes cluster and you enabled auto instrumentation, you would then be able to monitor various metrics related to that Java application, uh, CPU and memory usage that the application is consuming on the host, as well as metrics, logs, and traces of the application. And then if you need cert manager or profiling enabled, uh, you can set those to true. And then also you'll want to specify an access token as well. This access token is going to allow the collector to push metrics to Splunk Observability Cloud. And then if I click next, you can see that it provides the same Helm commands uh, that we saw in the documentation. Except here in step D, you'll notice that the Helm install command is specific to the input that I provided on the previous page. So values like the cluster name, for instance, and uh, the uh, platform token value. And then if you enabled auto instrumentation, uh, you have this step E where you can perform an annotation on the deployment depending on what kind of application you wanted to instrument, whether it was Java app, Node, or .NET. And if I ran this Helm install command in my Kubernetes cluster, on the next page, you would be able to see the metrics that are being pushed to uh, Splunk Observability Cloud. In this case, I haven't actually ran that Helm install command. In my case, I've already constructed a custom uh, Helm install command for my specific Kubernetes cluster. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to uh, my Kubernetes node. I only have one node in my cluster. I'm going to navigate to that node, and then I'm going to perform uh, the Helm install. I'll add the Helm repo and then perform my uh, custom Helm install command to deploy the uh, Otel Collector Helm chart. So I'm going to pull up my terminal here, and I'm already logged into my instance. And the first thing that I'm going to do is add the Helm repo. So I'm going to paste this Helm repo command in, and we're naming the uh, application, this particular uh, Helm chart deployment, as Splunk Hotel Collector Chart. And then we're pulling it from this location. And after uh, that executes, we'll perform a Helm repo update. So now when we perform the Helm install command, we'll be able to query that repository and uh, pull the Helm chart. So again, I'm going to paste in the Helm install command because it's pretty long. So in this Helm install command, we're specifying the Helm release as Splunk Hotel Collector. And then with these set commands, we're overriding the values in the uh, Helm chart to be uh, specific to our environment. And in this command, we're specifying more values than are required in order to actually install uh, this chart into our cluster. But a lot of the values should look familiar to you based on what we saw in the uh, Kubernetes integration wizard in the Splunk Observability Cloud interface. So things like the Splunk platform endpoint, the HEC token, uh, the access token for Splunk Observability Cloud, as well as the Realm. And then down here, we're specifying the uh, repository and the specific Helm chart that we want to install. And then finally, we're deploying a custom manifest that will configure the hotel collector when it's deployed. So I'm going to hit enter. And it looks like that command worked, but we can confirm that it's running inside of my cluster uh, by opening up K9s. And I can see all of the namespaces that are available in this cluster. Um, it was deployed to uh, the default namespace. And as you can see, there are two pods in the default namespace uh, that were deployed from that Helm chart uh, that are the hotel collector agent and the cluster receiver. So now that that's deployed, we should be able to see our cluster metrics in the Splunk Observability Cloud interface. So I'm going to navigate back to um, Splunk Observability Cloud, and we will exit this integration page. And I'm going to navigate to Infrastructure. And under Containers, I'm going to select Kubernetes. And these two entities are Kubernetes navigators. You have Kate's nodes and Kate's workloads. If you haven't seen these Kate's navigators before, we have published a video that goes into more depth about how these navigators work. 
I'm going to select Kubernetes nodes. And it does look like the Otel collector is pushing data about our Kubernetes cluster. Um, this appears to be our cluster and the uh, single node that's running in the cluster. But just to confirm, I'm going to run a command on the node. Um, I'm going to echo this environment variable, which should give me the cluster name. Okay. And I can verify that name aligns with what we see here in the uh, in the interface. So if I scroll down, you can see that now we're getting all of these metrics um, about our cluster, including nodes and the pods running on the nodes. And the same goes for the workloads. If I navigate to uh, the Kate's workloads, I should be able to see uh, the various workloads that are running in the cluster. If I click on the default namespace, um, I should be able to see the Otel uh, pods that were deployed. So yeah, we have the Otel collector uh, cluster receiver and the Otel collector agent, as well as the various metrics um, for uh, these uh, workloads. I also want to briefly navigate to GitHub and show you the values.yaml file uh, for the Otel collector helm chart. We only changed a handful of variable values, um, but if you scroll down, you can see that there are a large number of configuration options in the values.yaml file so that you can customize your deployment to uh, your specific needs. But if you want to do a basic deployment like I did, the only thing that you need to tell Otel Collector is where to send the data, which is either uh, Splunk Platform or Splunk Observability or both. And depending on which platform um, you're sending or which location you're sending it, you'll have to specify the endpoint and token for Splunk Platform or if it's Splunk Observability, uh, you'll need to specify the Realm and the Access token. Those are really the most important configurations if you want to do a basic uh, deployment of this Helm chart. Now, I want to be clear that when I deploy this Helm chart by itself, um, no data is going to be sent because I haven't configured the Otel collector with receivers and exporters and pipelines. So although the Hotel Collector is successfully deployed to uh, the Kubernetes cluster, you still have to provide a configuration to the Hotel Collector application that specifies exporters, receivers, and pipelines saying, hey, this is an application running in my cluster. I want you to collect data from it and export it to uh, this location. And you'll notice if I navigate back to the terminal, in the last line here of the Helm install command, I'm applying a manifest specifically for the Otel collector. And this is configuring the Otel collector with receivers, um, exporters, and pipelines. I'm going to quickly cat that manifest file, but I'm not going to walk through uh, that configuration in this video. So if I scroll up, you'll see that there are receivers defined for the cluster. There are uh, configurations for the agent itself, which defines receivers for the agent um, so that it can identify applications in uh, running in the cluster and then push those uh, applications, metrics, and data to uh, the targets that we specified in the values.yaml file. So if you're performing a basic installation of this Helm chart, it makes sense to simply pass in the variables like I did here, uh, where I'm setting the variables um, in line with the Helm install command. But if you're going to perform a highly customized installation, then you'll definitely want to uh, reference the values file, make the changes in the values.yaml file, and then just reference, uh, pass in that values.yaml file to the Helm install command. And you don't even need to pass in the values.yaml file. You can actually pass in your own uh, YAML file that will specify n number of variable values that will be used uh, and injected into the Helm chart release. And I think that that's mentioned in the documents as well. If I navigate back to the documents, uh, this section set Helm using a YAML file. So you can pass in the arguments as a YAML file rather than just the values.yaml. The last thing that I want to show you is the integration in the data management section after it's been set up. So I'm going to navigate to uh, 
observability cloud. And then from here, I'm going to go to data management. And then I'm just going to click on the Kubernetes integration. And as you can see, it confirms that there's metric data uh, actively streaming in and gives me a high level overview of the metrics around my environment, like how many nodes exist, the namespaces, how many pods, and then individual data points. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, we'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks for watching.